Have you ever gotten this error in Microsoft Access before? It says the database has been placed in a state by user admin on whatever machine that prevents it from being opened or locked. Well, if so, this video is for you. Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about this error, what it really means, how to fix it, why it happens in the first place. And here's a hint, it usually happens because you're sharing your front end file, which is a big no-no. All right, here we go. Today's question comes from Miles in San Diego, California, one of my Platinum members. Miles says, how do I fix this error that says my database has been placed in a state by user admin on another machine and now nobody can open it? I have a small access database at work that three of us use during the day to track service calls. Yesterday afternoon, I went to add a new field to a form and everything seemed fine. This morning, my coworker tried to open it and got that error message. Now I get the same thing on my computer too. We are a tiny office and only have two PCs on the laptop, so I'm not sure where that error is coming from. We have a busy week and I really need to get this thing working again. Is there a simple way to unlock it or did I break something? I feel like I did something dumb without realizing it. No, no, no. You didn't do anything dumb, but I'm hoping you've got good backups just in case. But your data is probably fine. We just have to fix that error message. First, though, let's talk about the root of the problem and what's happening. This problem is almost always caused when you've got multiple people sharing the same front end file. You should not do this. It's a big no, no. And I've had people with like even two person offices where they're like, well, we almost never use it at the same time. So and that's that's usually fine, but sometimes it isn't and it works until it doesn't. Right. That one time you go to, you know, edit a form and the other person tries to get in the database and pfft, doesn't work. So the solution is to split your database. And we'll talk more about this in a few minutes. You want a separate front end and back end file and every user on the network gets their own copy of the front end. Now it's possible to get this error even with the front end, but it's much, much less likely. Okay. All right, so what's happening here? Well, someone likely opened the database and they started editing the front end, like making a design change to a form or something like that, or, or editing a table. And the other person tried to open it. And the person trying to open it will usually get that message because the database is locked. Whenever you try to edit the database, the front end, it locks the database, puts you in exclusive mode, which is part two. Right. They open the database for exclusive mode, because even if you're not going to edit it, you can open it exclusively. It's another option under file open. And then, of course, there's always another possibility. The database might have crashed, leaving behind a lock file. This can happen if, let's say, you're working on the database and all of a sudden your computer reboots or, you know, the power goes out or something like that. And the database gets left on, you know, not closed properly. There's a lock file that stays behind. And I'll show you what that is in just a moment. Interesting side note, it says user admin, but it's not usually a user named admin. This comes from the old access work group, the legacy stuff back in like 2003. And it just means a default access user account. Um, it could be any Windows user on that machine. So if you're wondering who's admin, uh, it might not actually be someone named admin. All right, here's a quick fix. Now, before you do any of this stuff, Make sure you have a good backup of your data. You should be running nightly backups. We'll talk more about this at the end of the video, but backup, backup, and backup again. And if you can right now, go to Windows and make a backup copy of your database file, your ACCDB file. Back that thing up. <laughs> that sounds like it should be a song, right? Back that thing up. That's going to have to go on a t-shirt now. Now, once you're sure everyone is out of the database, right? Make sure everyone's out of access completely. Shut their machines off if you have to, right? Make sure that, it, in fact, that's not a bad idea. You might wanna log everybody out of Windows or even shut their machines off just to make sure that they don't have a hidden, you know, uh, an, a hidden access process running in the background somewhere. That can happen. It can check your task manager. It might be running still. So get everybody out of the database, get everybody out of Windows, shut their machines off if, if you have to, right? Then delete the lock file. Now, the lock file is named LACCDB. It's a lock file, not your ACCDB file. It's a very tiny file. All right, here's one of my databases, right? And if I open up this database, this is the front end, that's the back end. It's a split database. If I open up the front end, okay, let me move this off to the side here. Notice that file that was created there. It's a tiny little text file. 
right? Look at the size. It's teeny tiny, one kilobyte. This is your lock file. This is what happens. Like if this doesn't close down properly, I'm going to shut it down now. Watch. And that file disappears. That's how access knows who's in that file. All right. Every access file has it. And even in a split database, if I open up the front end, okay, and then I go into something like I'll open up a user record here. Notice there's an, there's an LACCDB file now for the back end file because I'm accessing table data. Okay. And when I close this database down, those files go away. So if you have LACCDB files, if you have lock files sitting around in your folder, after everyone's out of the database, delete them. It's okay. It's safe. It's just a little tiny file that keeps track of who's in what. All right. Now, once you've done that, you're going to open up your front end and your back end files. You can open up whatever files you've got and you're going to compact and repair them. All right. If you don't know what that is, go watch this video. I'll put a link down below. It basically is going to clean up the database, make sure everything's okay with it. Now, once you've done that, try opening the database and it should load and, and be just fine. If not, we'll have to continue troubleshooting. If you're only getting this error message on one machine, try checking the shared folder settings. Make sure that the person has read and write access to the folder that the database is in. Okay, that's a Windows level thing. If that doesn't work, try opening up the database on the server machine. On whatever machine you've got that's hosting the actual database file, your quote unquote server, whether it's a real server or not, because I know a lot of you are just running small peer to peer networks and that's fine. That's fine, especially for small two, three person setups, whatever machine that that file is physically on, try opening it there and see if it works there. Okay. If it works on that machine, but not another machine, then you have a networking issue or a windows file permissions issue. It's not an access problem. Make sure you're not using a cloud-based storage folder, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive. This should be in a regular local drive on your machine, preferably on your actual internal hard drive. You can use an external drive or a network attached storage device if you really want to. I do recommend that they're on a local C drive though. Lots of people try getting away with doing this. It's not good for access. Trust me, I got a whole separate video on it. Antivirus programs can cause problems with access. Disable them. You don't need anything aside from built-in Windows, whatever they call it, Windows Defender now, Windows Security, they've changed the name a few times. Whatever comes with Windows is fine. Everything else, your Nortons and your whatever other stuff you might have downloaded, get rid of it, okay? You don't need it and it will mess with access. Check your network stability. There's plenty of free tools you can get online to analyze your network connection. If you got problems with machines talking to each other, that can cause problems with access. The way access works is if you got two people, even if your database is split and everything's working fine, if your network isn't stable, you know, access has to be able to read and write to that one big giant file. And sometimes it's got to pull lots and lots of information across that network. So if your network is unstable, it's going to cause problems with access. Don't use Wi-Fi if you can avoid it. All right, use a wired network connection between your machines. Trust me, not only is it much, much faster, it's much, much more stable. Now, the number one reason, like I said earlier, that people get this message is because they're sharing the same database file. Now, normally under regular circumstances, just using the database, you can get away with this for a while, okay? Access is actually designed so that multiple people can read and write data. Just the data though not the design of the database. So if you modify a form or a report or change the table structure, it's gonna cause this problem if you have a shared file where everyone's using it. And, and I get why a lot of people do this, right? Um, you know, Word and Excel, for example, now you can share the same file if you want to and you can both make edits to it and it's, it, it works like that. And, and so does access for working with the data, but not designing the database. So if you've got a situation set up where you've got a, you know, you've got a small database on your computer and you want to let your secretary use it, well, you know, Joe, whatever. Okay. So you connect Joe to your drive with a shared windows drive and you guys can use the same database and it works and everybody's happy, right? Until you try to make a change or Joe tries to go into design mode and then this problem happens. So what you want to do is split your database. Right on your computer, you're going to have the back end, which has your tables in it. And then everybody who's using the database gets their own copy of the front end on their local machine. And it connects to that back end file. And this will prevent 99% of the time, it will prevent this error from occurring. 
Okay, you'll have a front end, Joe will have a front end. You'll both be talking to the back end, wherever it happens to be. It could be on your computer, could be on a server, could be anywhere. But that's the big deal. Everyone has their own front end. So if Joe goes into design mode, he can make design changes to his copy of the database. Okay, now, then if he wants to distribute those changes and give you a copy of the work he just did, like the new form he built or the query that he changed, he'll have to give you a copy of, of his front end. Okay, but that's, you know, that's how you have to do it. Now you say you've done all this, you've got a split database, you're still getting this error message as well. There's a, a, there's a number of things that could still be. This video talks about like what'll solve 99% of the problems, but when in doubt, run down my troubleshooter, it's on my website. I've tried to list the solutions in the order that they're more likely to solve your problem, right? Obviously back up first, restart access on all the machines. Um, Compact and repair, give the database a compile if you do any VBA work, even if you don't, it's not a bad idea. Don't use online storage, run it on a local drive, check for known bugs, make sure you're running out of a trusted location. Um, then some simple things here too, like restart office, reboot the computers, all of them, reboot clean, okay? Um, you know, Try a different machine if you can. Try an office update, there's lots of stuff on here. And if you're still stuck after doing all that, well, stop by my website, uh, visit the forums, and uh, feel free to post a message in our forums. We've got lots of different, uh, very active message groups and lots of people who love trying to help. I'll put a link to this down below. Another thing that might be helpful, check out this video on backing up your database. Uh, a lot of people panic when they get errors like this, but if, you, if your database is backed up properly, then you're, you're much less likely to panic. So watch this video. Now, after you've split your database properly and you've got users on your network that you want to be able to push updates to, check out my access updater, right? With one click of a button, it will copy your new front end changes to all of the different people on your network. So you don't have to go around and copy in all the front ends, right? Copying it to Joe's machine and everybody else's machine. You just click one button and the updater handles it for you. So check this out. And also while you're at it, check out my security seminar because I teach you how to properly set up security so that Joe can't break things in your database, right? Uh, it'll let you control who's got access to what. Even if there's only two or three of you, proper security is a must. You don't want people going in and messing with stuff they're not supposed to mess with, right? And while we're talking about security, if you really want to protect your data, the backend tables and make sure it's safe and secure and no one can mess with it, then you really wanna talk about SQL Server. Access is great, but it's not 100% secure as far as keeping your data safe. Right now I've got a seminar that covers how to set it up online. I've got a new course coming out to teach you how to set it up in your office too. So check my website for more information on that. All right, so before we wrap it up, remember the big takeaways. This error usually is not access being broken. It almost always happens because people are sharing the same front end file. Someone went into design mode or a lock file got left behind. The real long-term fix is proper database design. Split your database, give each user their own local front end, keep your files off cloud storage, and make sure your network and your permissions are solid. If this video helped you, post a comment down below and let me know how you liked today's tech help or tell me if this fixed your problem. So that's going to be your tech help video for today, brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. 
It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.